Good morning, everyone. Sorry, caught me fixing my specs there. Um, welcome to Thought for the Day. Uh, this is the last, uh, not the last one of this week, this last one, last one of our series in the Fruit of the Spirit, although we probably will come back to it again tomorrow uh, just to kind of sum everything up. But uh, welcome this morning anyway. Uh, it's good to have you with us. If you're watching later on YouTube, good to have you with us as well. We're looking, as we said just uh, then, the Fruit of the Spirit. We've been looking at this for the past couple of weeks and um, that this is the last one today and it's all about self-control self-control but before we look at that let's bow our heads and let's pray together lord we thank you for your presence with us again this morning we thank you for bringing us through another new e new night lord uh to sorry another night and to another new day and we pray lord that this morning you'd be with us as we gather around your word and help us lord to learn something of you uh through your holy spirit that we might put into practice in our lives in jesus name we pray amen okay so yes fruit of the spirit and we've gone through love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control and that's where we are today self-control kind of sums it up love is the start of everything Love is what all of the other gifts are, or gifts or fruit of the spirit are surrounded by love. They're all, you know, they're all the fruit of love, if you like. God's love for us, his desire to see us living for him, his desire to see us following him and impacting the world around us. So he gives us his Holy Spirit out of love to display these wonderful aspects of the fruit of the spirit. And we've seen them all as we've looked through these last few days. And then right at the end, we come to self-control. Because if we don't, if we don't, if we don't do this with any of these things with self-control, if we're if we're if we're out of control, then these things, any of these gifts, any of these fruits, any of these aspects of God's work in us, out of control can cause problems too. And and uh, so yes, so we realise that that's where we are. So the 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 self-control gift is uh, or fruit is right at the very end for a reason. It kind of sums everything else up. What does it mean? self-control um control of self obviously it's not that hard to understand is it keeping ourself under control keeping our emotions our feelings and our desires and uh you know the things that drive us under control and, and i guess the question is always if we're controlling ourselves well who is in control is it ourself or is it something outside of us um lots of people have problem with addictions and things today addictions are have always been there uh, addictions to all kinds of unhelpful things uh, but addiction to anything if it's in control of you that it's driving you is not helpful is it and what the fruit of the spirit god fills with his holy spirit and what that fruit displays in us is is the is the holy spirit's direction if you like to make sure that well it's self-control you should really stick another little word between the two of those words really put another word between them self under control under someone else's control and we, we, we are abjectly not very good at controlling ourselves there was uh, and we need so we need help don't we we need help to keep everything in place and um, there was a, a professor in, in, in a university in America who did an ex he was known as the marshmallow man and he he did a, he did a, a, an experiment with young children five-year-old children and he put them in a room with a, a, um, a sitting at a table with a marshmallow on the table and they had to be there for 15 minutes and uh, they weren't allowed to eat the marshmallow. If they managed to resist eating the marshmallow, they'd get another two afterwards. So you resist that one, you could end up eating three. But if you eat that one, you don't get any, okay? So that was the thing and he'd just leave them on their own and he filmed them while he did that. And quite a lot of them couldn't resist them, ate the marshmallow, worked out that if I get this one now, he might not deliver on the others and all the rest of it. But there were some that held out and then they got it. And it was a quite an interesting test of self-control. I wonder what you'd have been like with that, um, how, whether you could have kept yourself under control. Self-control, but we, it really is self under control, as we say, because often we find it really difficult. And as Christians, you know, we, we know where God calls us to live a life that is, is holy and, and, and righteous and, and re represents him to the world. We see God's self-control everywhere. God's, um, you know, he's, he's patient and all those other gifts that we've, we've looked at. He's patient with all of them. We, 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 and all of those gifts are evident in him and all of them controlled all of them in, in a way that it's it's a bit like we we're talking yesterday meekness and gentleness strength under control so how can we know that as well well god 
does impart his Holy Spirit into us. That's what this Holy Spirit uh, fruit is trying to display in us. This, this ability to keep ourselves under control, to not lose control of our desires, to have them submitted to God. It's very difficult to do that ourselves. Paul writes to Titus, his, um, if you like, the elder who he left in, 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 on Crete to help build some new churches there. And he did, he, so Titus is kind of trying to build these churches and Paul was emphasising to him the importance of living a godly life. In other words, a life characterised by the fruit of the Spirit. He says, you know, we, we need to do that. So we need to make, and part of the reason for that is in chapter two, he talks about slaves obeying their masters and doing the things that, you know, so don't get out of line. And the reason we do that is because we're, we've got our self under control, if you like, and we make the gospel more, we adorn the gospel, we make the gospel, the good news about Jesus, more attractive. You know, if a Christian is, is somewhere and he behaves or she behaves in a way that lacks any of this kind of godliness or holiness, in particularly the, and, you know, in the area of self-control, then it's, not oft, it's, well, it's often picked up by the world, isn't it? Look at how he couldn't control, you know, this is, it points to, uh, points to our God and doesn't make the gospel attractive. It basically says God, you know, it, it is, you know these, that they make the headlines in the newspapers and things if they get really out of control. But then Paul goes on to Titus uh, in, in chapter 2 there and says, says a couple of verses there towards the end of the chapter, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people and teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. So God realises and knows how sinful we are in our hearts, again, because the, the, the Spirit of God within us, given us these fruits, has always been dealing with our heart, because that's where the problem is. You know, we've seen, we mentioned a couple of times that the Bible tells our heart is de deceitful and desperately wicked, and it, it can be. It, it, it tells us lies. It leads us down garden paths. It leads us down the wrong way. But a lot, the, what a lot of the world's teaching today is follow your heart. Well, if you do, you're going to end up in trouble um, in many ways. Um, so God says, no, submit your heart to me. Let me yourself be under my control through the Holy Spirit. I will fill you with my spirit and your heart will then be dominated by me and my thoughts and my feelings. And, and, and therefore you will live lives that are godly and lives that are self-controlled and lives that adorn the gospel, that make the gospel attractive. And, and, uh, and so that's what the fruit of the Spirit tries to help us to do. It's the grace of God. It's almost like a push, a pull from one side. Look, Paul says, this grace of God has appeared and saved you and brought you into, into fellowship with God again and dragged you out of the mire that you were in before and given you this hope and security and all the things that we have in Christ. And he says, so therefore that grace should lead us towards self-control. But when we stray and when we fail, when we fail, the Holy Spirit within us convicts us and shows us that where we have gone wrong and brings us back again and brings these things back under control. The Holy Spirit's like the shepherd in our hearts, if you like, keeping everything, rounding everything up and keeping everything in perspective and under control. And that's why we need the fruit of the Holy Spirit apparent in us, because the more he, he's displayed in us, the more the Spirit works in us, the more that we display Christ to the world around us. And that's the important thing, isn't it? That's what people want to see. So when people meet us as a church or as individuals, what they want to see is Jesus. What we want them to see is Jesus because he's the one we're trying to lead them towards. We can't save anybody and we can't, you know, they can, we, the best we can do is not good enough. But with Jesus, he's done everything that they need to do and he's, he's shown them grace by uh, dying for people and, and for us and rescuing us from our sin. And so we see that here. And so self-control is just one of those gifts, one of those fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and all of it under the control, ourself. All of that's ourself under the control of God through his Holy Spirit living in us. And so I wonder if you're, would you describe yourself as self-controlled? What areas where, are there in your life where things sometimes do get a bit erratic and out of control? Maybe God's Holy Spirit this morning, if he lives in you and if you're a Christian this morning, he will be there and he'll be teaching you and helping you to bring those things under the control of God through his Holy Spirit, submitting ourselves to him, our hearts to him again. And in order to do that, we ought to pray, oughtn't we? So let's pray now and ask God to help us through his Spirit to be those self-controlled people who, are, who adorn the gospel and make it attractive to those around us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this
desire, Lord, to follow you. We wouldn't have had it otherwise. We pray, Lord, that as we come to you again today, Lord, we recognise that sometimes the, the desires and the thoughts of our hearts are not as under control as we want them to be. And when they're under our control solely, Lord, they go all over the place. And once again this morning, Lord, we want to submit ourselves to you. We pray through your Holy Spirit that you would lead us to, to live those lives that glorify you, controlled by your Holy Spirit, live to, to glorify you, as we say, and to draw people to yourself by making your word, by adoring the gospel in everything that we do. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning again. Tomorrow we'll meet again at half past eight. If you can join me, that'll be great, or later on on YouTube. And we'll kind of sum all these things up that we've been talking about these last couple of weeks. But until then, have a lovely day, and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye-bye.